Oh my goodness. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> Welcome back to Attack the Pantry. I am Jen Della Vega. What's up? Uh, this stream is a deep dive into ingredients, cooking techniques, and recipes to help you cook for yourself during ongoing panini and for the rest of your adult life. Uh, say hi if you're in the chat. We love eggs here. This is how we show love on this show, on this show in particular. Um, last time on the channel, I played Elden Ring for like an hour and got through most of Stormhill Castle. It was great. Um, yeah, I'm not quite there yet to beat the boss, but it was very exciting. Uh, but last time here in the kitchen, what did we make? I kind of don't remember. <laughs> But you can watch all the past clips here uh, on my channel if you click on videos. The entire archive is located at youtube.com slash J-E-N-N-D-L-V. You can subscribe there. I'm going to put it on the screen for you. For anyone that is watching the VOD. There you go. Boom. How are we doing? Robert, hello. Good to see you. Glad you're here. Uh, what else is happening? Uh, I'm a Twitch affiliate to get the business out of the way. I'm a Twitch affiliate. That means that, uh, your subscriptions to this channel, uh, pay actual real money dollars to me, uh, to help me make this stream better. So it's not free to stream. <laughs> I wish it was, <laughs> but this stuff costs money. Oh my gosh. Um, so you can check out all the links below the video to support all the little projects that I do. I have a Patreon, I have an Etsy store, uh, Instagram, you can follow me on all those places. Yeah. Um, and then we also have like a wish list. You can also connect your Amazon Prime account so you can get free Twitch subscriptions every month. That's pretty great. Um, all right, let's change up the music a little bit. Go with, uh, we'll go with daydreaming. How's that? That's pretty nice, daydreaming. Oh, it's soothing. Turn it up a little bit. There you go. How y'all doing? I am trying to stay cool with the AC. Got a bunch of projects going on at the same time. <coughs> Excuse me, pardon me. <coughs> ay, ay, ay. Allergies have been so bad. Anyway, I think I deserve a seltzer about it. We can have a seltzer. ASMR. Hell yeah. Yum. All right. Today, we're going to... I'm going to share some screens about what I've been doing this week and what people have been sharing and or asking me on Twitter. Then we're gonna attempt to remix Antonio's Graman or the Grand Line Manju Buns from the One Piece cookbook. Um, the original recipe are these sweet buns with uh, candied chestnut and azuki beans, but today I'm going to fill it with various things. Oh, excuse. That's my rice cooker making deepy noises. Um, this recipe is really easy. It's cake flour, baking powder, sugar, vegetable oil, an egg, some milk. Um, and then I'm going to change up the fillings. We're going to go savory and sweet. But I'm going to do several rounds of it because my rice cooker can't hold more than uh, two ramekins at a time. So we will do this slowly. But yeah, we're going to be cooking from the One Piece cookbook and remixing these sweet buns, making them savory. We'll, we'll, we'll try. We'll see. We'll see. But first, let's get some show and tell going. If you would like to be part of the show and tell segment, all you have to do is send me your cooking photos on Twitter or Instagram, or you can tag me on those platforms at Randwitches, and I will put it in the sideshow because I like rooting for you. It's very nice. It's really fun. Okay. Let's get these slides up. Show and tell time. Yeah. I made a I made an entry slide or intro slide now. It's getting fancier here on the show. My goodness. 
up first, Shmas made kunafe. It is uh, Emily introduced this stuff to me. Kunafe is kind of a stringy pastry dough. It's it's basically phyllo that's been shredded, and you can uh, bake it until it becomes crispy. And uh, the concept is you you can uh, pour orange blossom syrup or honey over it, so it soaks it all up. Uh, but it, this one is a homemade ricotta filling. Wow. And one of the best things Schmas has made in ages. It looks incredible. And it's got crust pistachio there in the middle. I would like a crunchy piece of that next time you make it. <laughs> what else is happening? Oh, Rodrigo sent in a question. What is your go-to place for dried chili variety? What about oil variety? Are these too many questions and making you reveal all your secrets? And does this constitute a consultation and I need to pay? I'll be happy to. That's very sweet. Uh, anything that's a tweet length, I am happy to uh, answer questions <laughs> if I have the time. Uh, my go-to place for dried chilies. Well, I don't have a particular place. Um, I shop regularly at Food Bazaar in Brooklyn, and that is a Latin X. Uh, specialty store so there's lots of dried peppers that are available there already so like ancho uh, morita guajillo uh, all sorts of uh, dried red peppers but if you need something um, like special like hatch chilies those are best ordered directly from farms in new mexico or um, in new york there's a mail order service at new york spice shop uh, and I was able to find Pekin peppers there, which was pretty great. Uh, let me get that link. Oh, here you go. Robert has a great suggestion. Calusians. Hell yeah. If you're willing to travel to Manhattan, Calusians is amazing. Um, Sahadis is another one. Sahadis is in Brooklyn. Here, uh, I'll, I'll uh, New York Spice, Spice Shop. Spice Store in Queens, and uh, they mail order. So if you're interested in spices, there you go. Oh, yes. Robert has the good suggestions. I also go to Duel's. Duel in South Williamsburg. Um, Duel does deliveries if you order um, a certain amount of groceries from them. But they specialize in Indian cuisine. So you can find curry leaves there. Sometimes lime leaves you can find. Uh, what else? They've got a lot of great stuff. But Duels, Calusian, Sahadi. Um, let me see. Sahadi. Let's get the, the link for you here. Love a Sahadi. Um, all of these options also have olive oil but my go-to olive oil is actually from fairway uh fairway markets it's a chain in new york city they have um their own house blends of olive oils and they're delicious they're worth the 20 dollars, and they're really big bottles um let me go get one actually i'll show you oh i almost knocked a mushroom off the table here we go see this is the uh Gata Herdes Extremadura, unfiltered extra virgin olive oil. That's the one I have. But yeah, those are my quick answers for this question. Thank you for asking that question, Rodrigo. Amazing. Um, ooh, got an announcement. Culinary Word of the Day is coming back on uh, your podcast feeds uh, on August 31st. We're also putting a Patreon preview uh, online on the 24th, which is a Wednesday, next Wednesday, or no, two Wednesdays from now, two Wednesdays from now. Uh, but it's been really fun. Alicia and I have been doing a lot of research and recording episodes. Uh, we're also introducing a new sort of behind the scenes bonus series um, called Eschelente, which is um, a conversation between us about uh, a set of three words. So uh, for every three episodes we publish of Culinary Word of the Day, we're going to do a behind the scenes episode talking about those three words. Uh, and it's going to be really fun. We've already recorded like four of them. So uh, <laughs> can't wait for you to hear it. 
it, we we're learning a lot. We're learning a lot. I didn't think I could learn more about culinary words, but there there's just a wealth of information out there. So that's coming back soon. It's very exciting. Uh, this is just the uh, kare kare ribs that I made for a baby shower on Long Island a couple of weeks ago. Maybe a month ago already? No, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> uh, it's dressed with my peanut butter fish sauce and pomegranate and parsley. It's very pretty. I love it. Uh, this is also the vegan stuff. We have a barley salad with cranberry and parsley and then uh, a vegan wedge salad or a uh, chopped salad. So it's like uh, eggplant bacon, tomato, pickled onion, chives. And then on the side is a uh, bowl of cashew dressing that's completely vegan. Good stuff. Uh, the other day I was enjoying some codfish liver. I know it doesn't sound appetizing, but I love codfish liver. <laughs> if, I, if I ever see a tin, I will buy it. Um, this brand is Minnow. Uh, it's available in Brooklyn. I have some brioche buns here, crackers, and spicy almonds. That's kind of all I needed for my lunch snack a while ago. Um, oh yeah, and it's the sixth anniversary of my appearance on Guy's Grocery Games. That's crazy, right? Um, so I shared a bunch of screenshots and gifts the other day. Um, they're actually re-airing this episode on September 14th. Um, let me go get the link for you. Uh, JDLV on GGG. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, it's airing September 14th at 5 p.m. Eastern. Crazy. Can't believe it. It's a six-year-old episode and they're still re-airing them. Fascinating. Uh, all right. So those are things. Actually, no. There are still a few more things people have shared with me. I'm going to share my screen really quick. Entire screen. Share. Okay, it's going to get meta. Um, <laughs> Jesse sent this video. We're going to mute it. Um, anime with Alvin. So this is from the Babish Culinary Universe. And this guy, Alvin, uh, makes a devil fruit cake. So he makes the batter here. You can see making the batter. Hooray. This is very soothing in the style of binging with Babish. <laughs> I didn't know that Babish had expanded the culinary universe of, of shows. So there's a cake batter. It's made into two sheets. They get baked. And then he hollows out a very expensive uh, melon and then uses the melon to layer the cake. Oh no, we have an ad. Anyway, I'm gonna switch uh, tabs. Uh, James sent this one. This is a bunch of eggs in a tube. Thanks James for sending this through. I don't really know the purpose of doing this, but it's one way to serve uh, quail eggs, I guess. <laughs> If anyone has any um, insight as to what this is served with, I would love to hear it. Because it's just like solid tube egg. <laughs> oh, wait. Translation. Let's... Uh, cute eggs in the shape of steak. Seven pieces of quail eggs that are shaped like ice wax. First insert the egg into the ice wax plastic. Boil it. The result is so beautiful. You can also use a chili sauce. Interesting. I would I would love to see how else this is enjoyed besides eating it with chili sauce. It's just basically hard boiled quail eggs. Um, this James also sent through. What are you doing? What's happening? Sciencing, sciencey stuff. Okay. Oh no! Why would you use a sparkler in the egg? Oh oh. That's wild. What? What is happening to this poor egg? Uh, just like the commenter below there, I, I also thought they were gonna grill the egg. What is happening? Whoa. Sparkler in the egg. Wow. Okay. 
So back to this video, uh, Alvin is layering leftover cake to make a trifle with the melon. It's fancy. All right, well, with the finished product, he uses fondant, fondant to uh, do the outside of the devil fruit. And it actually ends up looking pretty cool and accurate. Look at that, it's so pretty. And then he attaches the stem back on. Very fancy, very nice. Wow, incredible. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, folks, if you wanna be part of the show and tell uh, segment next week, feel free to send me your food memes, your food photos, cooking photos, uh, or questions, and I will answer them here on Attack the Pantry. Anyway. Let's see, what are we gonna do today? We are going to make steam cakes. I'm very excited about this. All right, before I do that, I'm going to cut some mushrooms. I didn't set up cooking cam today because my phone was not charged as much, but we are going to move the camera down so you can see me slicey slice. Slicey mushrooms. These are gonna go on top of the savory steam cake. I'm gonna do both sweet and savory. Okay, cut some mushroom. Hooray! One flavor I'm gonna do is mushroom. Another flavor I think I wanna do is, we made this banchan last week. I'm gonna do some of this. This is um, just spicy sauteed scapes. I don't need to cut that, that's actually pretty good. Um, and then we're gonna cut up some anchovy here. I wanted to do, like a fishy one. I'm just gonna get one anchovy out of here. If I can get an anchovy out of here, they're all just sticking. Gimme. <laughs> just getting pieces of anchovy, not a whole anchovy. Gimme. Oh my God, there we go. Whole anchovy. I'm gonna chop this up. So anchovy is really potent. And one way to tame that is to balance it with another flavor profile. So like, you know, you have your five flavors, salty, sweet, bitter, umami, sour. So this is really salty. So I'm gonna use something that is perceived to be spicier to mix with it. So I'm gonna use some really nice wasabi. This is from Kamaya brand. And then I'll finish it with some furikake. But I'm just gonna put this in a ramekin for now. I can reach it without breaking anything. All right. Anchovy has been chopped. Wash my hands real quick. Okay, so today we are remixing. I'll talk to you this way. Uh, we are remixing a recipe from the One Piece cookbook that I worked on. Hooray. Um, this is page 86, if you haven't. Antonio Graman's Grand Line Manju Buns. So the original recipe is a cake flour batter that is steamed with candied chestnuts and azuki beans. So I'm going to omit 
the, the filling, the candy chestnuts and the beans. Um, and we're going to replace them with several other kinds of filling. So I have like um, sauteed garlic scapes with gochujang. I have mushroom, shiitake mushroom. I have sausage. And I wanted to do one of anchovy and wasabi. And then I wanted to do one sweet one that is this toffee candy. If you've seen this before, this is from Ikea. I bought a big bag of these, so I've been eating them all month. But this is a chocolate covered toffee, which is like a score bar, which we discussed last week. Um, so I'm going to see if this steams up really well. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. So according to the recipe, we need one cup of cake flour. Bowl. Okay. Down into the bowl. Got my King Arthur cake flour. Okay, where is my cup? Coffee cup. One cup. Hello. Thanks for joining. Yeah, the anchovy and wasabi sounds interesting. There is a rice ball cookbook that I also worked on that's on Viz Media. And my favorite rice ball was called the Okaka, which is bonito and wasabi. So that's kind of what I'm playing off of here. So I've got my one cup of cake flour. Starting off here. Oh my gosh. I always get cake, I get flour everywhere whenever I bake, so I'm trying to be super clean. All right, next we're adding one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Got that here. One. Oops. One. And I'm gonna eyeball the half, because I'm lazy. Okay, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. What else? Quarter cup of sugar. So I don't have enough sugar, but I'm gonna use as much as I can and then make up the rest with honey. You can't really substitute honey 100% because the, the sugar crystals are actually doing something with the structure here. Um, but we're just going to try our best. We're going to try our best. Yeah. All right. So I got to move some of this stuff out of the way. Get my honey. Lordy, I need more counter space. Today, I'm going to use a Chipotle Marita infused honey from Runamuck. Thank you so much for sending this over. Break of the seal. Oh my God. Hey, thanks for following. It's just Tay. Thank you so much. All right, I'm going to need my spatula for this. All right. It's going to be a little messy dealing with honey, but. We don't mind. All right. Whenever you deal with any kind of honey or syrup, it's always good um, at the end of your cooking process, wipe the jar um, with like a damp paper towel and it won't be sticky the next time you use it. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna make room here because I need to read the instructions one more time. Uh, cut the candied chestnuts in half. We're skipping that part. Uh, crack the egg into the milk to a total of half cup. Oh, okay. I need vegetable oil as well. Aha. Okay. 
Okay, we'll get them. Uh, add one tablespoon of vegetable oil to the bowl. Great. Hi, Schmas. How you doing? I shared the picture of your kanafe earlier. What inspired you to make kanafe? It's so good. And was it easy to find, like the the pastry? Okay. So the instructions are to crack an egg into the measuring cup and fill up the cup to a half cup. So we're not adding a half cup of milk. We are supplementing with a half cup of milk. Okay. All right. Interesting. Wipe my hands real quick. All right, so I've got my oil in here already. We're gonna start with, let's see, the egg and milk combination here. Get all that liquid at the bottom, this gold. And then we're gonna add my uh, infused honey and sugar combination. The recipe calls for straight up sugar, but since I don't have a lot of sugar, I made it up with honey. Okay, get everything from here. Don't waste a single drop. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, the pastry was not easy to find. You went to a Bosnian market. Once you had the rest was easy. You tried to make halloumi, but the cheese never split, so you made ricotta not to waste the milk. You ended up finding a recipe for ricotta canafe. Nice. Very nice. Good, good improvisational skills. <laughs> okay. And now I just mix it all together. It's such an easy recipe. And this only makes how many buns? This makes eight buns. Uh, okay. We're just gonna mix, 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 mix. Oh, it was a whole journey. Hey, Emily. Emily, we are making steam buns today in the rice cooker. And I'm going to do a whole bunch of different flavors. It's a small batch, but enough for just me. Okay. Okay. Now we've got our batter. And... The way that we're going to cook these, not your typical baking method. We've got ramekins with these baking cups, baking, baking paper liners in them. And we're going to stick them in my rice cooker to steam. Mix this a little bit better. Okay. And to get some semblance of consistency, we're going to use an ice cream scoop that I know is a tablespoon. So we're going to do a base layer at the bottom here. So one. And then we're going to do two. And then I'm going to fill them with my savory filling. So the first one I'm going to try is anchovy and wasabi. So we're going to do probably a teaspoon of this or half teaspoon of anchovy that I chopped up. And then we're going to do a dab of this nice wasabi. <laughs> Hope it doesn't hurt me later. <laughs> okay, that's one savory. Okay. 
And I top it off with another tablespoon of steam bun mixture. Then we're gonna do some, let's do the skate. Get my chopsticks. This is banchan that I made last week. This is sauteed garlic skate with gochujang. So we're gonna put that in the middle. And I also might snack on this while we wait. Put this in the middle here. And then we're gonna put another layer on top of batter. So the idea is these, this is cake flour that's going to rise pretty high. Um, and there's some extra baking powder in there to help it rise. Cool. So how long does this steam? Um, steam for 10 minutes. Okay. So back here, rice cooker. It's already been preheated with the steam. I'm gonna put these in. Those, and then I'm gonna steam for 10 minutes. And while we wait, I'm gonna eat some garlic scapes. <laughs> oh, did the scape flowers ever open up? Good question, let me go get it and show you. So last week we cut off the flower bud portions or these um, tops of the garlic scapes and I put them in water so that they will blossom. And it looks like I've got a tiny sprout here. This one looks like it's going to come out. Uh, I have one, two, three, four, five, six of them that are going to hopefully sprout. Yay. I haven't changed the water yet. They hasn't gotten slimy. It's still very much alive. Um, so uh, we'll check back in on these next week. <laughs> Cute, right? Okay, so that's two buns that'll be done in 10 minutes. Um, the next one I feel like now these mushrooms are too big. I'm going to chop them up a little bit more. And I only need like this much, I think. Oh, thanks, Emily. It's a counterintuitive shirt. It's a tank, tank top and it's it's like a sweater material, but, <laughs> but uh, it's comfortable. It actually doesn't make me that sweaty. Okay, so we're going to mince this mushroom a little bit more and when it's steaming inside the cake it's actually going to um release some of its moisture uh ideally i would have sauteed this um but it just feels like a lot of work i just want to steam things today we're just gonna make sure it has a lot of flavor i might use some of the um the scape juice in fact why don't i Two birds, one stone this. We're going to eat this, the scapes from this and then use this juice to uh, mar marinate the mushrooms. Boom. Oh, you had something similar in red. Nice. Uh, what is everybody having for dinner tonight? I would love to hear. Mmm. Um, it doesn't really matter what mushroom you use. I'm starting with shiitake because I know um, how, how that cooks. Um, and I've worked with it a lot. Um, I don't know. Any mushroom would... We're going to see if this works at all. <laughs> we're experimenting. But I will, I will tell you what I learned as soon as we eat this, this finished steam bun. 
Ooh, you're having a salad and finishing a donut. What kind of donut is it? Details. We love details. All right, Robert, for dinner, um, some leftover rice, smoked pork. Got to figure out how to use some cabbage that's not eating plain raw cabbage. Yeah. Honestly, I love just roasting cabbage or sauteing with like sesame oil. Mm. Regular glaze from your spot near me. Ooh, you had lasagna with garlic knots and you just made blueberry muffins. Ooh, is it hot where you are? Because I don't dare turn on my oven right now. <laughs> it's like 90 degrees in New York and I cannot bear to bake. Which is why I'm steaming my buns. I do not have the link to this recipe because it, it is not published online. It's in... The One Piece cookbook. <laughs> oh, your kids like muffins. Nice. <laughs> mm, okay, I'm doing my duty of eating these garlic scapes. <laughs> I'm actually getting full of these, but I will get a ramekin. Okay, ramekin. We got the mushroom that I chopped up. I'll break up a little piece there. Then we're gonna use the gochujang that from my dish here. It's okay if a, another garlic scape gets in there, but we're gonna marry the mushroom like that. Easy. And we're not, you know, making a ton. Like when you're doing fillings for any kind of bun, you really are not working on a large scale. So this is only like two tablespoons worth of mushroom. Cause I'm only making eight buns. Oh, today was the best day you had in like a week, so it's now or never. I get you. I totally get you. It is quite hot out there. I hope everybody is hydrating. I don't want to open the steamer and like ruin the rise, but I want to look. I wish that I had like a glass, you know, see-through rice, rice cooker so that I could see what's going on. Anyway, I'll drink, drink a seltzer about it. Oh, yeah. How is everybody keeping cool this summer? I've been, um, my fridge has this really funny issue where, um, it, uh, leaks water from the freezer on a regular basis. <laughs> uh, and it's supposed to like settle at the bottom of the fridge and like steam upward or like it's like part of the cooling system, but like something broke and now it just leaks water in my fridge. So I have to keep like a quart container at the back of the fridge and that water freezes. So I always have like a block of ice this big in my fridge that I have to empty out every week. Oh yeah. Uh, Emily is sitting in a, in, in a fan and your AC at the same time. That's very nice. ACs and grilling outside as much as possible. I love grilling outside. I love it. Uh, oh, poor Schmoss. <laughs> you just caved and moved a fan like two feet away from your work desk and just drinking a ton of ice water. Yeah, it really helps. I, I grew up in the desert and all the kids at school Every single kid would freeze a water bottle or, you know, right you know, the night before school, you would get a water bottle, like a plastic one, drink like an inch of the water out and then freeze it and then bring it to school with like a towel wrapped around it so that you could just like put it on yourself whenever you needed it. 
yeah it's not you know it's not sustainable by today's standards but that's how i survived like i was in marching band so like i had to be outside on the school lawn from i don't know at like 2 30 to 4 30 every day and it was rough yeah frozen water bottle that lasts to the evening was clutch like i needed it i'm from the mojave desert <laughs> in california and now i live in new york okay we got five minutes left on the steamer i'm so excited for this though i have to get a toothpick to make sure that the cake is done Big time. Yeah. Give me a toothpick. Yeah. Struggling with toothpick. Give me. Okay, here we go. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, Massachusetts weather is unpredictable at times. Wow. Uh, your marching band experience is the opposite. What did you play? Um, we discovered that a lot of people who watched this show were in marching band, including Chris, who has just entered the chat. <laughs> Hi, Chris. <laughs> Chris, we're making steam bun. I'll save you a steam bun. Ah, you're a trumpet. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't mean to make that face. I'm sure you make the same face when you find out that I was a flute. Ah, you were only ever in marching band once a year for a mandatory stint in the Memorial Day parade, so you didn't fall, fail band class. <laughs> I get you. First chair. Yeah, I was first chair as well. <laughs> So funny. Oh yes, Schmas also played trumpet. Put my drink down here. Three minutes until steam bun reveal, or at least when I can test it with a toothpick. All right, the next set, I'm gonna do mushroom, this gochujang mushroom, and then sausage. Like I have some sausage here that I got from the meat hook. And then, you know, I haven't, uh, we can put the uh, sprinkles on these things. Like I, I, I could put spices on my steam buns. I don't know why people don't put spices on their steam buns. Oh my God, your fingers would freeze and only hand warmers work for the palms. I can't imagine being in marching band in a, in a freezing climate would not be good. I would complain because I'm putting straight up nickel, like metal, on my face. <laughs> that would suck. Don't know how y'all did that. It's very different other sides of the country. Very different. <laughs> my goodness. Chris, what are you having for dinner? Are you having leftovers? Because everybody else has answered this question. You haven't yet. So what are you having for dinner, Chris? Ooh, always 100 degrees in North Texas where you practice marching cheese. Jeez. I don't like that. I don't like that. <laughs> Ooh, you're gonna have a big salad. Oh, that's a good trick. Keeping your mouthpiece in your pocket when you weren't playing. Smart. <laughs> so smart. All right, one minute left, and I can test. I can't wait. I'm like hungry. I'm like <laughs> hungry for this. Mm. Gonna have a big salad. <clears throat> All right, go. I've got the steam bag right now. 
All right, we're gonna try to move my setup a little bit closer to the actual steaming process. That means it's done. Hi, Paige, thanks so much for following. Oh. All right, you can see the steam rising. Let's get a oven mitt. Actually, no, I'm gonna test first before I take them out. All right, open. Oh my God, they're so cute. Oh yeah, these are done. They're so cute, oh my God. Look at that steam <laughs> It's got like a round, <laughs> a round top. All right, we're gonna get it out of there. Oop, flip over. Sorry. All right. Steam bun. Steam bun. Oh my God, they're adorable. All right. It's like a little cupcake. I know, they're so cute. You just wanna pat it. They're very hot. Um. So this one was the anchovy wasabi one. And this is, as you can see, the uh, banchan. This is the garlic scape with gochujang. So I'm gonna let those cool off, but we're gonna make the next set so we can get them into the steamer right away. So these ramekins are still really hot. Hold on, I'm here with my mitt. I'm gonna do another batch. So. Where is the cups? I'm gonna put cupcake liner in here. And then we're gonna do one scoop of the mixture, the bottom. Another scoop, scoop, scoop. They look so cute and they're not deflating. They're very, very um, cakey. All right, so we're gonna do um, gochujang mushroom in one of them. I'm not only gonna use half of this actually. It's a lot of filling. All right, gochujang mushroom. And then the other one, I'm actually gonna do some sausage. Got a sausage from the meat hook here. I'm gonna, let's see. So I'm gonna pull off like maybe a meatball size piece here. Like two teaspoon size. And I'm gonna put it in the middle. Super cute. Wash my hands because that was raw meat. And then we're gonna top it off with a little bit more batter. Mushroom one. So man, a steam bun. And sausage one. <laughs> so amazing. So cute. All right. Back into the steamer, these go. Uh, you can watch me do that here. Now, let's see. 10 minutes. All right. This is very, very exciting. Okay, look at this perfect little bit buddy. Perfect little buddy. Oh my gosh. I'm going to use my knife to cut through. This is the anchovy and wasabi one. I mean, the fun of it is to uh, bite through and, you know, meet the filling, but I just want to show you. Cut. <laughs> I love it. Look at it. It's a savory little soft bun. All right, gonna 
taste test the anchovy and wasabi one. And I mean, I put spicy honey in this, so let me just try the bread on its own. Oh my gosh, it's so airy. <laughs> I love it. Okay, now a bite of anchovy. Maybe I should have mixed the fish a little bit better with the wasabi because I have a huge chunk of wasabi right there, you see? Mm. I'm going to take a big swig of seltzer before I eat this wasabi. Mm. Three, two, one, blast. Ah. Dude, that's so good. <laughs> It's like a sweet, cakey bun with like the, the big salty head of anchovy. And the wasabi is actually pretty mild. Mmm, that's great. Because it's so cakey, it absorbs, it's like a shock absorber. Mmm, hey LT, how you doing? Mmm. All right, so that is the wasabi anchovy. I'm going to save these. Now we're going to try the garlic scape banchan bun with gochujang. Cut it in half. And the reveal. We're making steam buns, LT, with various fillings. Hmm. So it seems like the filling has gone all over the place in this one, but I don't mind. I could stand to put more filling in these, I think. Hmm. Super fun. It's like savory, spicy, sweet, mostly sweet because of the bun, but it's like not, it's not too sugary or anything. And I get a tiny, tiny bit of fire from the gochujang, like this tiny, tiny burn, but it's not bad. It's like not scary or bad. It's just delightful. Mmm. <laughs> I like that. That's so much, this is so much fun. <laughs> Making tons of little buns with different fillings. Mm. My goodness. Mm. Okay, I gotta save room for the next two buns, which is sausage and mushroom. Alright, I'm gonna put these away over here. Super fun. What kind of buns do you all like to eat? Or have you had, you know, um, a, a steam bun? Because in the Philippines, we have shopao. It's spelled S-I-O-P-A-O, -O, shopao. And it's um, white steamed buns. And they can have hard boiled egg inside. They can have a uh, meatball. That one's called bola bola, shopao bola bola. Um, ball ball, obviously. Um, <laughs> you can have um, char siu pork. You can have, uh, what else? I don't know what other kinds of shopao there are. Oh, chicken. You can have chicken adobo. Basically, like, any leftover food in the Philippines, you could chop it up and put it inside a steam bun. <laughs> so good. But um, I also grew up with a friend who is Chinese, and she brought um, chow su bao to school. So those are, um, are they still steamed? No, those are baked. These are egg washed, like milk buns. And they either had like barbecue pork inside or red bean paste. Oh, see, you literally, Tay, you literally said what I... <laughs> <laughs> red bean paste and you like roast pork buns they're so good they're so good yeah but we're doing a steam bun roulette here 
with my random ass ingredients in my fridge. Oh, meanwhile, while we wait for the next one to cook, um, I want to show off a project. It took me like three days, but between a visit to Daiso, the dollar store, and Staples, I am reorganizing my entire spice cabinet. I'm not done yet, but basically, this is what it looks like now. So I have these little squarey 300 milliliter containers from Daiso and I've separated out and you know, you see I've labeled it. So the star anise one is unique um, because uh, it's not just the spice in this one. Uh, I have a even smaller container of just the powder in here. So if I need it, I need the whole spice, I can get it. But then I also have powder here, which is exciting. So I have these cute containers from Daiso and then these pink like baskets are from the dollar store. And then I got a refill of my label printer so that I could do this. Saffron. I have an incredible amount of saffron. This is worth a lot of money. <laughs> um, but you know, I like Thai chili. And I still have to label this one. This one is clove. Actually, let me do that right now. <laughs> Get the label maker. I mean, we're, we're waiting anyway, right, for this to finish. We got three more minutes on my um, my steamer. Okay, so that one is clove. Clove. Paint. I love label makers. <laughs> I can't believe I waited till I was an adult to get one. He. <laughs> Sticker. Okay. Clove. Which side am I doing here? We're doing the corner side, so we're doing that. Oh. Beep. Look at that. Look at this organization. Isn't it nice? Isn't it lovely? I have also divided these baskets into different, uh, types of spices. So these are whole spices. We've got spice mixes in another basket. Like this one has um, chili powder. Um, what is this called again? This is called Panch Foran. Panch Foran. It's um, it's like for tempering tadka or um, finishing Indian dishes. So this one has like, um, where's the ingredients? Cumin, fennel, nigella seed, mustard, fenugreek. And then I have another basket that is seed spices, like fenugreek seeds, coriander seeds. Actually, I have two baskets of seed spices. <laughs> so I'm just gonna spend this evening uh, making the labels of this stuff, for this stuff. Oop, and aligning the lids better. My goodness, what's wrong with you? Make sure. Ooh. Anyway, this is what I've been spending my time doing. <laughs> it's so nice and organized. <laughs> okay. One minute left. We're gonna have another set of steam bun. Have I ever had fresh fenugreek? You keep seeing it online. I want to try it, but I can't find it anywhere. I have not tried fresh, fresh fenugreek. I've never heard of it, actually. Very curious. Very curious. Um, I am gonna get my thermometer out because. Since we're dealing with meat, I want to make sure that those the meat bun is actually finished. So 
So we're going to get my digital read thermometer ready. I'm going to grab these. Oh, you can eat the leaves? What? I am curious about this. Oh, yeah. Oh, we got a little bit of a divot here on the meat one. I'm going to get the thermometer in there. 133, 148. We're looking for 165 for doneness. 162. Oh, oh, 163. <laughs> 164. 164. Oh, yeah. Made it. 165. Nice. Sausage one is done. Ow! Oh, but it got a little hole in it. Dang it. All right. All right. Mushroom bun. Oh, okay. We're going to let these cool and we're going to start another batch of steam bun. Hell yeah. Okay. So, I think this will be our last round of steam bun. We'll see how much batter we have left. So, we're going to do, uh, I think, the toffee candy bar in one. And then, maybe I might combine the mushroom and the anchovy and wasabi a little bit more. We'll just do an ultimate bun. Toffee bun. Yeah, we're going to do toffee bun. All right, I'm going to get my cake liners. First, oops, there's only one. There's only one. Cake liner. Cupcake liner. Okay. We'll do our tablespoon base layer of steam bun batter. You know, I was worried that um, this batter sitting out would deflate, but it seems to be holding up nicely um, over the past 30 minutes. So you don't have to rush, rush, rush to make these. Okay. Got our base layer of batter. And then, yeah, I'm gonna combine the savory stuff. We're gonna combine the anchovy with the mushroom. I'm gonna add a little bit of wasabi to that ramekin and I'm gonna mix this better. I'm gonna be a little more generous because I didn't taste it before. Or I mean, I barely taste wasabi. I really like wasabi. All right, mix it with my toothpick. It's kind of wild. <laughs> All right, savory filling on one side. Cool. Okay. And then sweet filling on the other side. All right. Oh, and um, you just saw it in the chat. Uh, culinary word of the day, which is my podcast that I've been working on for the past year. Uh, we are going to start releasing season two on, um, August 31st. All right. So this is a chocolate covered toffee bar. Oops. It has a broken piece. I'm just going to stick it there in the middle. Where's the broken corner? Okay. Here we go. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. I wonder how steamed chocolate is going to perform in the rice cooker, but we'll see. Okay, I'm gonna grab the last of the batter here. Hope I have enough. enough to cover the chocolate here. Oops. 
I'm gonna have enough for the other one. Here, I'll use the spatula. Finger on. If this was a commercial kitchen, I would not be using my finger. <laughs> but I just want all the batter. There we go. All right. One. And then get the other. Everything. This makes exactly six if you use two tablespoons per bun. So maybe a little bit less batter next time for each one. We've used all the batter. Are you still hot? They're pretty hot. But I can handle it. Ooh. Okay. So the other one is pretty easy to tell uh, that that's the savory one, but I'm going to put a little bit of uh, gyo fun, which is like a ramen uh, condiment. It's like powdered bonito and chili powder. Um, so we'll know that that's the savory one. Don't want to mistake it. Okay. See. Ten minutes. Okay. Let's try these other two. All right. We got our meatball and our gochujang mushroom. Okay. All right. First, the gochujang mushroom. Oh. <laughs> I didn't slice it very well. It's too squishy. All the filling seems to have distributed through this one. Oh my god, cute. Ooh, this one's juicy. Look. Wow. Mmm. I really like that. You can afford to be really bold and punchy when it comes to steam buns. Like the filling should have like tons of flavor. Oh, there's a dog. Um, yeah, you shouldn't be afraid to use punchy feeling, uh, fillings if you're going to improvise with steam buns because the steam bun itself is just so absorbent. Um, that it ends up balancing out each other. Mmm. So next time I'll saute the mushrooms because it, it's a little moist on the inside here, but not too terrible. Mmm. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Mmm. Okay. Now, I'm very excited about the meatball one. <laughs> So I was only eating, no, I still want to only eat half because I want to try the other ones. All right. The meatball one has a hole. I think it's because as the meat was cooking on the inside here, it was like it had to release its own steam from the inside of the bun. So we'll have to think through that next time. All right, but the meatball is cooked. It sank to the bottom, but I mean, it's not a very tall bun. It looks like a boob. <laughs> Censor me. <laughs> right, cut that in half. Now, meatball sausage bun. Oh my God, it's so cute. Kind of like a little hot dog. Oh, I feel like... <laughs> That's really good. Holy moly, that's really good. I was sort of complaining the other day that this um, 
this brand of sausage, the meat hook sausage is a little salty, but if you're using it in a bun situation, the bread or the substrate is going to even it out a lot more. That is delicious. Oh my God. I want to save room for the other bun, but I might want to eat this whole one. It's so good. Oh my God. Mm. Man, that's delicious. I really like that one. Wow. Um, for those of you who are just joining us, I am riffing off of a recipe in the One Piece Cookbook, which is a book that I worked on. Um, I didn't work on originating the recipes. I was the U.S. language recipe tester. Um, but it's a very versatile recipe. The original ha is a manju bun, which is candy, chestnut, and azuki bean paste. But if you just make the batter like I did today, you can rewind or watch the VOD later. Um, you make the batter. It's literally like a cup of cake flour, one and a half teaspoons baking powder, quarter cup of sugar. I substituted some honey for the sugar, a tablespoon of vegetable oil, one egg, and then um, I believe it's a quarter cup of milk. Yeah. And so I've just been playing with the fillings. It's super good. Yum. And then we steam them in cupcake liners for 10 minutes. Mm, yum, 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 yum. I can't wait for toffee bun. Oh, we still have eight minutes left. I want toffee bun. Wow. Yum. Great. And it's great to know that in 10 minutes, a meat filling was able to cook thoroughly to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Hell yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to clean up a little bit. I'm going to get a paper towel. Excuse me. BRB. So kitchen tip. If you are dealing with any honey, maple syrup, that kind of stuff, and you've just poured from the jar and it's like a little sticky on the outside, use a damp paper towel or a damp kitchen towel to get that excess off the edge. Then you can put the jar lid back on and it won't stick. Bye, Schmas. Have a good dinner tonight. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out. All right. All right, folks. And instead of our normal chopped exercise at the end, how about you just tell me what you would put in a steam bun? Like, tell me your, your uh, dream steam bun filling. I would love to hear it. If I made you all this steam bun batter and all you had to do was fill it up, what would you put inside? <laughs> what a question. What a question. Ooh, wow. Robert says, I'm envisioning like a taco style filling in the steam bun. We could add like cumin to the top of it. You could do ground beef with cumin, coriander, paprika, chili powder, um, chop up some cilantro, some onion, real small, real small, and steam that. That sounds great. Um, ooh, and a little cheese too. Yes. Hell yeah. Oh, Leah with some insight in Austria. There is something called powidl, and when you put into the steam bun, it's called germ, oh, germ nodel. Really cool. Haven't heard of that. I like that. Yeah, what are the steam buns called in your country? Where Wherever you are, uh, are there different kinds? Because I told you about Shopao earlier. 
uh, and chow shi bao. So are there other kinds of steam bun that y'all are familiar with? Get up the countdown. Still got four minutes left on dessert bun. Ooh, LT got marinara and mozzarella in your steam bun. That sounds great. Yes. One day I will make all of these things. Mmm. 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 Good ideas. These are all good ideas. Hmm. I'm going to Google it. Types of steam buns. Oh my God. There are so many. Bowsy. Wow. Bowsy. Cool. Wow. Chinese cinnamon roll. What? Hearty piece of dough wrapped full of glutinous rice and Chinese red bean. Baozi. Mantu. Steam bread. Oh, wow. Crystal baozi. That sounds amazing. Hell yeah. Okay, how many more minutes? I keep looking at the clock. I'm like, oh, I want the bun. I want the bun. <laughs> my goodness. Need a bun in my body. Love to have bun. <laughs> mm, but this was a good, this was a good experiment. This was very good. Very fruitful. Ooh, fruit. <laughs> Ooh, I could do mango steam bun with some uh, condensed milk on top. My gosh, that sounds lovely. Sounds so good. Now I have all these chopped mushrooms I haven't done anything with. I'll save them for breakfast tomorrow. I need to use up a ton of tortillas, so. Ooh, tiny apple cobbler filling or peach cobbler in a steam bun. Oh my God, Robert, you are a genius. You are a genius. <laughs> oh, there's a dog's fighting outside. And I don't like it. Calm down, friends. Be nice to each other. <laughs> okay. Two minutes left on the clock. Two minutes left on the clock. Mm. I am so excited. I'm so excited. I want toffee bun. I just have a feeling. I don't know. What if the what if the chocolate uh, overcooks? Hmm. I've never actually steamed chocolate. Well, we'll find out. <laughs> mm. Okay. It's getting warm because of all the steam. This is why I could not turn on the oven today. I was like, nope. <laughs> Way too hot. One minute. One minute. One minute. <laughs> I put too much stuffing in that one. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, wow. Okay, the dessert one looks perfect. The anchovy mushroom one, I might have put too much filling in it. But now we've learned our lesson. Now we know. Okay. 
I'm just about getting full, but I don't care. <laughs> okay. You see, um, the overstuffed one kind of exploded there, but at least we know what's inside. And then this is the dessert one with the toffee, the chocolate covered toffee in there. I have a feeling this one's going to be great. It's so bouncy. Oh. And look, so after the other ones have cooled down, they have not um, fallen. They're still very cakey and soft. These are the other ones from earlier. Okay, let's try the savory one first. Oh, it's mushroom anchovy wasabi. We'll slice through this way. Oh, wow. See, this one's moved, the filling's moved around a lot on this, which is interesting. Oh, hot. Oh my gosh. That is so flavorful. It's so good. Okay, taste test. Anchovy mushroom go to Zhang. Mmm. Yeah. I'm angry at it. It's really hot though. Well, the other ones we would wait, we'd let them cool while I was making the next batch, but I'm just eating these straight up. Oh my gosh, that's really good. Who knew? Who knew? Wasabi and gochujang. Not not a crazy combination. It's pretty good. Mmm. I really like that. Mmm. -hmm. Okay. Let it cool off for a little bit. Now, my dirty knife, I'm going to cut into the dessert one. Sorry, I've got a dirty knife. It's only me eating, so. Oh, please. Please be good. Chocolate toffee bun, y'all. Oh my God, it's so good. Look at it. I can't believe that you know, I put a full tablespoon on the bottom, but a lot of it rose over the side despite not having a lot to put on the top. Um, let's try it. Yeah, it looks like a Heath bar in a bun. Mmm. I, wow. That's dangerous. This is dangerous. It's really good. But it's sticky toffee. So it may be in liquid form in the bun right now, but once it hits your teeth, it actually becomes candy again. <laughs> it's a little dangerous, but delicious. Yeah. Mmm. Man. Now we know we can put toffee candy or chocolate covered toffee inside of a steam bun. It's good. It's really good. What is my favorite bite? They're all my favorite bites. Oh, I can feel it. The toffee is now gathering into a ball in my mouth becoming harder <laughs> what an interesting experience <laughs> i wonder what the other half is going to be like when it cools down i'll report back later but that was also good my goodness mm. okay folks i'm gonna wrap it up for today thanks for hanging out with me um if you want to share your cooking photos or ideas for things you want to put inside steam buns, you can hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at Ragwitches. I will 
Let me check my calendar really quick. Okay, yeah, I will still be back next Wednesday here on Twitch. Um, usually starting around five. I mean, I know it started late today, but I'll be back next week. You want to attack the pantry? Um, stick around. We're gonna try to raid somebody. Um, but love seeing you all. Um, love cooking with you all, and I hope that you learned something today about steam buns. <laughs> all right. Um, stay tuned for the raid, uh, and I'll see y'all next week. <laughs>